Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's eight past seven, and guess what? It's time for the rampest druid I've ever seen. Is, is the audio on? Oh my god, yeah. Hey, hey, hey! Hello! What is up? I'm still going all straight beardical. Ah, uh, let me tell you, I had a very productive day. What I did is I got... Literally, the instant I go live, you start. Oh, there's a bug. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm interrupting the great the great hunt. That's right. That's right, Sheriff. You're Moby Dick, and that little fly is your white whale. I believe in you. I don't believe in her. She she's our little chubby princess. Um, I got I got a little bit of uh, post shave lotion. It's gonna feel really good on this face. Oh yeah, a little post shave lotion. Oh yeah, and then I came home, and then I watched. The most recent episode of The Night Of. So now I'm strung out. And then I watched an episode of Avatar The Last Airbender and was just so stressed. Still trying to calm down. Still trying to calm, calm down. Still trying to calm down. So I took a nap and I've just woken up so I feel great. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. This ramp druid has brought me to rank 5. <laughs> I just recently dropped down to rank 6 because I was trying other things, but... Um, super unbelievably excited, not just about this particular ram druid, but of course about the post-shave lotion that I'm going to be doing. I'm thinking later tonight I'll do a little, little application of that. Oh, it's going to be so good. But here's the thing. There's, um, which episode is this Jumper Jordan? Episode 7. Episode 7 from heaven. 7 from heaven, man. So... This deck, um... I, I, I once upon a time was trying really hard to get ramp to work. It's kind of like always. I really love ramp, and this this is actually working pretty nicely in the meta that has dragon warrior. There's several priests that are still trying to do nifty things thanks to Onyx Bishop coming back in. Um, obviously, there's the mid range hunters that have been good, and with the ramp druid that I have here, there's a couple important pieces to it. Um, First of all, here's just the general gist of this Ram Druid. I've been playing this a lot, so I have a lot of thoughts about this. First of all, um, you're ramping up to a ton of mana very quickly. So what does that mean? It means that you're not really going to be having that many cards in your hand. We have ten ramp cards, right? Two Innervates, two Wild Growths, two Astral Communion, two Mire Keeper, two Nourish. And we can even get some ramp cards out of Raven Idol. Ugh. Right? There's like just so much ramp. So we're going to be chucking a lot of cards. So that means that the cards that we do play, we want to be very high impact. So they fall into basically two categories. First of all, there's a ton of really good defensive taunts. Like Dark Arcoa. Two Master Jousters. Whoa. Two Ancient of Wars. Two Bog Creepers. Um, obviously we even have, you know, Scenarius and Sogoth the Slitherer. These are just really good, like, okay, give me a turn to just stabilize before I play. The second type of thing that I have, which are hugely swingy creatures. I think the simplest example is North Sea Kraken and Ice Howl. I play this, I kill a thing, and now I have a thing. Because basically, I, I'm going to be abandoning board control before I rapidly swing back and try to just tempo them out. Um, other things like, you know, why is RJ? We have Ragnaros, right? Just big counter swingy dudes. Deathwing is sort of the ultimate. Whoops, we've messed up and lost board control, so we're just gonna blast through. Um, Viva516 says, why Bog Creeper over Ironbark Protector? It's the seven mana versus eight mana thing. It's actually just. This is not specifically an Astral Communion deck. This can be done as a very strong ramp deck, and the fact that this can come out one turn earlier makes just a, a gigantic uh, difference. I tried running Barnes. Barnes does not actually operate very well in this deck at all. Barnes seems good in the sort of swift tempo-y decks, especially if you have a lot of death rattle creatures. The mid-range hunters that are running the Kindly Grandmother, the Savannah High Mains, Sylvanas, these sorts of things make a ton of sense there. Uh, you'll notice I'm not running Sylvanas, I'm not running Karen, I'm not running a lot of those um, those common dudes. Sheriff, you're never going to catch it. Never, ever, ever. You also notice that I'm not running some of the typical cards that you'd see in Druid, like Swipe or Living Roots. I, I actually just... 
like, the big thing is, okay, if I had swipe, on the turn that I played swipe, what would be the second thing that I did? Like, I only have these three cards that cost six mana. It's like, it, it, it doesn't compute well in the mana. I want to just play the huge things. <laughs> Sheriff, you're so cute. Wrath is great. Wrath is just solid. But here's the biggest thing that we're going to be seeing. Here's the biggest thing. I um, was, once upon a time, keeping Wraths and Raven Idols, and I've been chucking those back. And that has dramatically increased the win rate. Oh, he's such a good kitty. Versus We're against a human. This is good. Calvert, you get a happy birthday for your boyfriend Thomas. Thomas, happy birthday. See, like, here's, here's what I used to do. I used to be like, oh, okay, Wrath. This card is, like, super good in the opening hand because we want to we wanna slow the opponent down. Not really. We actually are looking to ramp. So Wrath is a nice card to wind up getting. But I, I, I will claim that it is not especially great to just have in the opening hand. So, yeah, I think... Greetings, traveler. I think I'm actually just gonna do this. I'm gonna run out of this bad boy. Why no Fandral Staghelm, uh, even though I'm running the two I Raven Idols? Sound. Like, ugh. Raven Idol is actually really nice due to this deck's, again, super low card count and inflexibility. And often I have a lot of 8 and 9 mana cards on turn 9 or, and or 10, something like that. Damn, crystal. Hey, you see that? So, what's, what's really nice is being able to, on turn 9, say... I can play an 8-mana thing and run out a Raven Idol. Or run out the Raven Idol first and play the thing. That I will really call the huge benefit of the Raven Idols. And again, it, it's a... It's a... I wind up with it being a nice-to-have sort of card if I draw it early on, because it can translate into ramp. This told is huge. Now, another thing to note is that this deck is... I shouldn't really be looking to clear right here, I don't think. I, I, it doesn't seem to be hugely... Well, he could do an Unleash the Hounds. You know, I think this is fine to do. I'm just gonna do this. Pretty quickly, though, I want to gear up to start going to the face. Pretty quickly here. By the way, I don't know if any of you recently saw this, but there was a video posted on Reddit, a video posted, where someone actually counted my Ragnaros shot percentage, right? Because I say, man, it's like well above average. I think I'm actually demolishing the norm. As it turns out, I am correct on 50-50 rag shot calls about 80% of the time. <laughs> like... Hey, look at that! Animal bite to the creature. Uh, also, my overall, like, Ragnaros um, shot percentage. That kind of hurts for him. Turns out it's like 50 something percent. Like 56 percent or something like that. And the average should be like 30 percent. Like, this is dramatically above the mean. Why is that so sparkly? Let's move this up. Okay, so what we could do is we could actually just pass. I've beaten a ton of hunters simply by chilling. So this is more than likely a explosive trap. So we're just going to chill. Why? Because... I can deal, like, five damage is really nice now that it's turn six. He could Savannah high main if that's an explosive trap. Oh my side. So he's, he's gonna get everything low, and that's okay. 
right? He's gonna. There's the six eight there. Oh yeah, no no no, attack it! Come on, you know you wanna. Oh, Despian Sheriff, you're so cute. Wow. Okay, so this is this is this is perfect, right? Because this is an explosive trap. Katarn 006 says, any chance we'll see you do a Barnes Malagos Rogue deck? Barnes out the Malagos, who's the only other minion in the deck. Shadow Step Barnes, do it again. Burst for dumb damage. Wow, that's... that is so clever. So now we're super defended. For the upcoming North Sea Kraken. Do you see why I like this deck? <laughs> it's just so awesome. Official M percent was 51.72%. That's right. That's like my rag shots were correct over 50% of the time, including like the 1 in 4, 1 in 5, 1 in 6 things. Oh, Cap, I'm so sorry. You're not going to put your kitty down. Oh no. Oh. We're against awful. For Doomhammer. Okay, so like again, here's the thing that I used to do. I used to be like, oh, okay, here's what I'm going to keep. But I actually think this is better. Now, sometimes what this results in is that my ramp just goes to hell. I just I wind up with a hand like this and I only draw nine drops and we just lose. And that's okay. And this deck is also like very easy to play. <laughs> just, a lot of times you just look and you're like, oh yeah, I'll play that huge dude. Bako Taka says, if you could have a Hearthstone themed superpower, i.e. being able to call all rag shots, what would it be? I mean, goodness. Um, if I could have a Hearthstone themed superpower. Gosh, I mean, it's like, because it, all it would be randomness mitigation. That's like... <laughs> it would probably be to uh, always be able to have a cold light in my opening hand. Okay, so I'm gonna have to do this. It's Slimana. So he'll he'll likely pop me there. This is an awkward opening hand for him. Don't worry, loves. The cavalry's here. Okay. I, I don't anticipate we're gonna win this game, because this is just a very ugly you know, opening game for us. But that's okay. I'll be able to coin out the Master Jouster. We're gonna kinda have to hope for no hex, and then we'll play another Master Jouster on turn six. And then Bog Creeper on turn seven and Ragnaros. That, that, this is, this is okay for us. Because he's going to have to, yeah, yeah. This is, this is okay for us. This isn't great, but, huh. Welcome to the party, Astral Hunter. Yeah. Also benefit is that I only have six cost for higher than in this day. Only have six cost or higher than in this day. Now, if he has Hex, we're more than likely going to lose almost immediately. But if he doesn't have Hex, then I think we're very likely going to stabilize. Oh, cool. I have big plans. <laughs> huh, okay. This is okay. Not, not the most amazing. It's not the most amazing. She's probably gonna hit here. I am this is not, not a terribly difficult series of decisions. I honestly think that the mulligan and the deck construction is far and away the hardest part, so we're just gonna ramp our way up there. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, yes, the Mire Keepers are obviously four mana. Did deck has... Some fish? Well, if we can dodge another scary totem, that's certainly bad for us. I mean, he's gonna have to hit, and he's gonna have to sack his two dudes, unless he has the big thing. What about Baron Geddon? Seems good for aggro meta. 
Yeah, I, I, I could, I could see, I could see working the Big Baron in there. Let's see, which of the big dudes would I cut? I mean, maybe the Ice Howl, but... Oh my god, hot form, thank you for the host. For 857 viewers, oh, sick. Top two world. And if he passes, that's not bad for us at all. I mean, this isn't the most- Oh, damn. So I think the incorrect thing would be to do some, some stuff here. Man, having that thing alive is not nice. It's not nice at all. I love Ice Howl a crap load. I like so much, I think it's awesome. I mean his his configuration of dudes on the board is just is just really difficult. Oh my god, Denthos asked me about mild, medium, or hot salt on Chipotle burritos. Dude, I'm telling you, straight up, straight up, hundred percent, hundred percent. Mild, but then you get the smoked chipotle and put that on the top. That was a good play by him. I think we'll probably have to discover some spells here. We could conceivably get a big, scary Tonto. No, no, even that would not, not be particularly helpful to us. Four and nine is thirteen. Uh, so I think we have to just discover some spells here. And we'll lose if we if we whip, and that's This is this is a good insurance policy. Kind of the wrong order. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have Don't know why I didn't do this a long time ago, but thanks for the content. Good stuff. Thank you. Could have innervated out Alex Straza. Yeah, that was probably the play. That was probably the play right there. Never mind, I found the play. Oh my god, this is literally the best possible opening again. Like, the literal best. That that was the play. That was the play. Innervate out the Alex Straza. I just completely missed that play. Completely missed that play. This is so perfect because if you're gonna chuck your hand, what's the best thing to chuck? All these other rampy things. Ice Howl is not a bad one to lose. So this is just fan freaking fantastic. That is the best chuck ever. Oh my god. Because now the only things left in our deck are um, pretty much going to be the big things. We also still have, you know, the two Raven Idols, which is totally fine. Spectacular. Spectacular, says Mabarose. Hello. Golden Booster, that's nice, man. Good to see you. Welcome. Well, let's just start playing the huge dudes. See, right now is where I'm really, like, if he plays a creature, I'm not going to kill the creature. It's fine. Gonna panther him? I'm totally fine. This is why I like to say that Ramp is actually totally a tempo deck. See, look at this, like, you just get the free wins sometimes. Yeah, like, it's just... BAM! POW! Wasn't that easy? Wasn't that unbelievably straightforward? Let me go ahead and open up, uh... Up the sub ticker, Alien Meat. That's what I'm talking about. What is up, Alien Meat? I charge it. I know, I charge it. <laughs> By the way, I'm uh, not going to be doing a day off stream on Friday this week. I've got a little day trip to a cabin planned. Oh. 
In between now and then, I'll be getting turn three Lysha RJ. Um. Okay. Okay, this is... Okay. The Rectacular, says Volf. That could be true. Could be true. It looks like... Wow, it looks like some of you are, are quite, quite a ways behind me. Have enough map. Got a hot date, Sizikra LQ. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I do. Forgot to tweet your stream. You know, I did, but the important thing is that what we're just gonna say is that this is, this is sort of an intimate private show, right? This is just a sort of everyone's gonna hang out and have a good old time. Now watch this. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Let me actually just get my get my face a little bit to the side. Okay, are you ready? Are you ready? Because I I have a build order planned. Okay. Good build, good turn. Is it JP? Nah, JP's just the booty call. <laughs> So that was a good. That was a good turn too. My blade be thirsty. My blade be thirsty. Uh. Ooh. This. This is. This is still. Me for the wild. Still better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Max says wants me to convey this, but my faith back in gaming. Started playing SC2 only because Eunice made me a better person. Hell yeah, man. StarCraft is a hard ass game, dude. It is, it is I would, I'll call it deliciously difficult. This is the play he wants to do, and that's totally a okay. Ugh. My turns are relatively straightforward. Jumper Jordan 112 says, other than books, manga, etc., do you collect anything? Oh, trade with me. Oh, damn. Okay. So, I think that the, 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 the methodology that I will be using to win this game is, I mean, really, I have to play the Ragnaros and hit this Frothing Berserker. This Frothing Berserker. If I had to estimate, I would say it's going to hit the 2 2 Well played. So we just we quite literally lost. But it's okay. It's okay. This deck has a pretty damn reasonable time beating uh, Dragon Warrior. Pretty reasonable. Um, but Dragon Warrior is like the deck to be right now. It's just so strong. So so unbelievably strong. And these games are fast. Let the hunt begin. I must protect the wild. Okay, so I, I don't want to keep both of your keepers. I think again the mulligan is the most important part of this entire deck. I think I only want to keep one. And if we can if we can just rip and innervate off the top, that'll really help us. I don't really ever want to play Astral Communion on turn four. Pretty much never. It's it's great on turn one or two. Yeah. Not the best opener, but he's okay. <laughs> yeah, he's just like, whoa! Look at this guy. It's great. I'll probably actually just play the Meyer Keeper and not do Astral Communion. I think that's the greatest strength of this deck, is that you can just ramp with it. Hello, Monger. And Hunter and Hello. What about turn three Astral Communion? I am I'm not the biggest fan. The serves me. So we can do this next turn. I mean, we're going to just take, take a little pain here. It's actually not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. 
outcome. So we're likely going to win this. Um. Now what is he going to play here? An animal bite. Okay. This is okay for us. So I think I'm first going to do the Raven Idol for a spell. Let's see what we get. We're going to probably be running this out. Ooh, that's a tricky one. It might actually be better for us to get naturalized. I think Mark of the Wild is the right the one. one the we, we have the Coin North Sea Crake in play. But I think I think I don't exactly need the naturalize. Okay, good. That was this is really 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 good turn for us. We're gonna start we're gonna start hitting the place. Job's done. And now we have just this unbelievable follow up turn where we're going to be going Mark of the Wild and Ancient of War. Now he's played a quick shot and he's played an animal bite. I, I estimate that he does not have a lot of good follow-ups here. Okay. And given how many death rattles in his deck, I would actually assume he does not even have that many secrets in here. So I think we're in amazing shape. Well, we've, we've drawn the nuts again. So... I don't think I need to uproot you. But we're going to. Don't forget about Hunter's Mark. Yeah, he could have Hunter's Mark, um, but this is okay. This is mostly okay. Gosh, I wish I hadn't have uprooted him. Didn't, I didn't need to do that, but what do you know? That's what we did. Well. Kind of sucks. Set myself up for this, but that's fine. So we could lose this. He needs, um, this is a beast, so he can actually just animal bite us to death. But, we got Dwayne out. Probably dead. Take heart. Nah. Your mother nah. will <laughs> no, 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 no. Ah, uh, it's a fun deck. It's a fun one. It's a fun one. Now we're gonna take a little mini break and refill. I'm going to refill on water. We're gonna get a drink and have some water on this thing, cause it's Tuesday. Oh, 